Some people still think that humans couldn't have built the pyramids. It will better be aliens helping them. Or the pyramids is a testimony to our lord and savior, Amun-Ra. This is Bray9 in a vat YouTube channel. Buckle up. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Dave. All my videos are opinionated. This one will be listed in a playlist called Building My Worldview. This is not an educational channel and I presume the audience have at least a rudimentary understanding of the topics and concepts I discuss. Today's topic is humanism or more precisely why I am a humanist. The next video will go more into details about my relationship to uh, secular humanistic ethics and why I subscribe to that. I will also make a video about uh, the concept secular and secularism. I have chosen to divide these uh, three topics into three different videos because I don't want the videos to become too long. This is despite that the topics are closely linked together. And that said, I want to clarify that I don't recognize Renaissance humanism and as a consequence the interpretation of Christian humanism that draws tradition from that as related to modern humanism as the term was described in the 19th century. These are two different things. I will not go into that distinction in today's video. About 15 to 25 minutes is what I'm aiming for for my videos. Some will be longer and some will be shorter. By the way, there are Christians that are humanist in the modern sense of the word too. This is part of the reason why there is two different humanistic organizations in Norway. One which I am a member of that is specifically secular humanist association and one that is open to all as long as they share their core values, the humanists. I will put a link to both their websites below. The reason why I have marked the video with hashtag 01 is because I might update the video in the future or find new information that I would like to add. And I will uh, make a new video then called hashtag 02 and so on instead of deleting the old one. This will make it easier for viewers to see uh, what previous uh, views I had and what I have changed my mind about. It will be interesting to see how far some videos will go. Remember, I will take any comments on today's topic with gratitude and if you, your comment makes me change my mind on something I will surely mention you. I would like to note that I always, if nothing else is said, use what I call a minimum sum definition. Please notify me in the commentary field if this has a proper name, as I have just begun calling it that myself. This will probably uh, have to be explained in a separate video, but in short, the term that I use refers to the concept that contains what is defining for the thing, the essence and not all the elements that one can add. I want to show to an example for clarity. If I say humans have 10 fingers, it's obvious that it's not a part of a definition of humans. In that case, one would have to exclude all humans who have lost one or more fingers or who were born with four or six fingers on each hand. In the same way, almost all descriptions of the human body or human behavior is useless or excess for other pur uh, purposes than to describe the norm. When I say the word human, I simply mean a member of, a, of the group of all living creatures that is born of a human. Now, if you transfer these principles to word like humanism, ethics, human ethics or secularism, you understand what I mean. When I say that I subscribe to secular humanistic ethics, what I mean is that my ethical view falls into a category that essentially fits with that description, nothing else. I have seen that this kind of definition is what most people accept exemplary with theism, a belief in one or more gods, but not with exemplary socialism, where many or most people 
will think of one that they know about of many complex and often conflicting political structures. As I said, types of definitions and the minimum sum definition need further elaboration, but for now let's get into the subject matter. Humanism. Remember I don't want to waste time explaining what it is other than a short explanation of where my views might, may diverge from others. I am a member of the Human Ethics Society of Norway and I have done work educating secular conformants in what humanism is and human ethics. Humanism is something one are based on core beliefs. It is what I like to call an as a matter of fact identity in that one cannot choose to be a humanist without sharing in those core beliefs. It is my opinion that uh, one that holds these core beliefs is a humanist whether they choose to identify as such or not. But essentially it's a worldview or an essential part of a worldview. As I grew up in a Christian society one of the things that struck me was that people attributed all kinds of things to God. Everything from the weather and mood to success in work and sports, but especially inspiration for art and culture and architecture. It occurred to me that this was the same in other cultures as well, but then to other gods. The fact that also other people and cultures have this inspiration was one of the arguments I used against Christianity when friends and family tried to convert me, already from preschool or early primary school age. The answer I often got was that they too worshipped God, but they just had the details wrong since they hadn't accepted Jesus into their heart. Even as a child I thought this was absurd. I mean, why would the Christian God inspire ancient people to build magnificent buildings and create elaborate arts and crafts dedicated to gods with radical different moral systems? Some who even demanded human sacrifice. Even cultures that didn't worship a god at all, like Taoism and Buddhism, got this alleged inspiration to create, achieve and build. Something was not right. At least one cannot claim this as evidence for one particular god. But the common denominator was the involvement of humans. All the while what I learned from this was that humans are amazing. Humans can achieve awe-inspiring things with creativity, persistence and not least cooperation. To illustrate what I'm talking about. In my childhood I heard a story from an old captain on fishing boats. He told about the worst storm he had ever experienced. Several ships capsized that storm. He said the storm and the waves was so bad that there was no chance the boat would withstand it without the help of God. I kind of knew the guy. He was my neighbor and my grandfather's friend. And my impression was that he was not someone who would make things up and not someone who would give up without trying his utmost for as long as he had strength to do so. But what I was thinking was, didn't he do everything he could? Didn't he keep the ship up against the waves, encourage and commanding his crew for the full duration of the storm, for as long as the storm lasted? He was a seasoned captain drawing on a lifetime of experience. And how could he know that, that the storm was in fact impossible to survive? He had never experienced a storm that was impossible to survive, or he wouldn't be sitting here telling this story. What I thought then, and what I still think, is that he saved that boat. He did it, not God. But he was uh, not uh, someone who would brag either. Maybe that was the problem. He was also a humble man. Proudness and self-promotion weren't revered amongst fishermen of the old school. Knowing that even the best could be surprised by a storm that actually would be impossible to survive. I don't blame him for telling the story like that. And I think he believed it was true. He also got the story across without bragging too much. I have many stories like this. 
some that I might tell in the future. This story is an example of what I would like to call everyday miracles. They involve all kinds of alleged divine intervention in everyday life for individual people, including everything from the divine entity helping someone finding their car keys, which have become somewhat of a cliche, to healing and helping the boat getting through a storm where many others didn't. Where I grew up, some people would attribute to the divine almost everything they experienced. If it was slippery outside, God helped them not to fall. Even tragedies like a child dying from cancer was by some given a twist so that one could think of it as something good. God saves the innocent from the world before they get corrupted could be one of them. I remember sitting at my grandparents' house listening in on such a conversation. There was some neighbors or friends that talked about a child that had died, which I didn't know. They took turns saying things like the comment above, while the others were nodding. I think it was Jesus took him home with him to heaven that was the last word. I have to say, I don't blame them for doing this. They had lived through hard times. And the coast of Norway was a rugged place to live and survive. When I studied my family history some years ago, I came across an island where at least one out of three of the male population came away at sea as their cause of death in the 18th and 19th century. Sometimes this also led to tragedy for the whole family when they lost their breadwinner at sea. It is easy to see how they needed something to keep them from losing hope completely. But I didn't understand this as a child. For me, it just sounded like they made it up as they went. I didn't see it as malicious though, but I could not understand why they didn't realize that the child dying was a tragic and unlucky event. Both then and now, I see their religious not as harmful. Quite far from it. They were also pragmatic about what works and what don't. They had to be, living in a so unforgiving nature. As I said above, the captain would never give up the fight in that storm. He probably, if I knew him right, thought about the crew and their family the whole time. And it's not like my grandparents didn't and their friends wouldn't have done whatever they could to save that child or to mediate its suffering. As a child, I just took notice that their explanation didn't match how I experienced reality. Today I wonder, if they had a realistic worldview, would it have made a difference? Would they have been better off or worse? Here's what I think about it today. The whole societal structure was legitimated by an interpretation of Christianity and the system was in many ways abusive and suppressive. Yet people found their ways to interpret their personal religion so that it would help them in their daily struggle throughout their lives. I don't think they as individuals would be better off as atheists or humanists. I do think they would have been better off in a society based on secular ideas, even if they were all Christians. I believe in luck and bad luck. I don't hold a deterministic worldview. People can do amazing things, but sometimes you just have bad luck. Society and law structure were built up based on the Bible. The Bible served in a way as a constitution, just as the Jewish text did in Judea during and before Jesus' time. I believe this system was reintroduced by the Hasmoneans, the Maccabees, and continued by the Herods until after the Jewish-Roman War and the destruction of the Temple in Jerusalem in 70 CE. This is what I think about as a theocracy. In a theocracy, one has a thought or an idea of how society should function that stands above the law, what God wants, or an idea of the good, if you follow Plato, I don't. To grasp this idea, one must read the foundational texts, in this case the Bible, to understand, in a way, what God wants. Everyone who is to have governmental or judgmental powers must have understood this idea and 
when they have, they can control and judge intuitively based on pragmatic adaptation to lo local conditions. But if those who govern and judge have not understood this idea, their personal biases comes to its fullest. In this case, the system is doomed to be corrupted, uh, which I believe uh, that we see clear signs of in the Catholic Church before the Reformation in the 16th century, and even worse in the reformed areas after the Reformation, especially after the kings made themselves head of the church in the 17th century. Theocracy stands in contrast to both despotism and bureaucracy. I'm not going into details about how I view the different governments, but I consider the absolute monarchies of Europe from about the 17th century to the First World War as despotic or dictatorships, even though they were also fundamentalist religious. Other countries, such as England, went to bureaucracy faster due to the introduction of constitutional monarchy in 1688. I believe that this difference is one of the important reasons why England and Britain outperformed the rest of the world technologically and in productivity, and therefore could appear in the Victorian era of the 19th century as the sovereign great power in the world. First, when the power of the throne, which was the head of the church, was constitutionalized, was it possible to start improving society based on pragmatic evaluations, instead of having to fight dogmas from the church every step of the way. In Norway, the historical divide was when we were unwillingly, actually by demand from England, after the Napoleonic War, separated from Denmark in 1914, and came under a personal union with Sweden through the Swedish king. Now, also Norway could start progressing society. As I see it, the two perspectives that stood against each other was not Christianity and atheism, far from it, but it was whether society should do what was evidently best in relation towards growth and prosperity, both for society and for individuals, or if we do what Northern European Lutheran Evangelic interpretation of the Bible tells us that God wants. Also, since one is different from the other, that is, since there is a difference between what this interpretation, or any interpretation, of what God wants, and what is evidently best, one can wonder if God, if there is one, actually wants human to suffer. I don't really think there is a contrast. What I think is going on is that the Bible is not and was never written to be interpreted literally. I think the Bible, or at least the Old Testament and the Gospels, was written with the intention of communicating a core idea, like I mentioned above, which is intended to serve as a foundation for a pragmatic and progressive theocracy. But this is notoriously misunderstood by fundamentalists. This is something that is evident by the sheer number of different interpretations that exists of what the Bible is telling us, and consequently what God wants. The number of different Christian denominations is disputed, but some sources say around 45,000 globally, and many of these hold vastly conflicting views. Not that the same kind of division can also be seen in other religions, but I talk from a perspective of Christianity, since that is the religion I have grown up with and know the most about. If you want to find information that is relevant to other religions, there is plenty of YouTube channels to go to. I'm not going to read up on other religions, just to please some of the audience. The conclusion is to me crystal clear. There is simply no clear message that can be derived from the Bible. The Bible is not a source from which we can find out how we humans should live together. And the only rational conclusion is that, whether there is a God or not, we humans are on our own when it comes to organized society. And therefore I am an humanist. One of the things I hope that I have got across in this video is that to me humanism is not some theoretical idealistic thing that I have read in a book. It is how I see the world around me every day. I see amazing, creative, compassionate people 
struggling, fighting, loving and creating. Christians, Muslims, Jew, Hindus and other religious, but we all are humans. And that's basically what we have in common and what makes us understand each other's struggles and what brings us together. I love to be right and that is the reason why I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. This counts for all my videos. Please write a comment below or contact me with some of the contact information I provide in the description below. Especially, I hope to hear from you, as I said, if you think I have said something that is factually wrong. Wikipedia should be a sufficient source for most of what I'm saying. If you're struggling to find sources for anything, please notify me in the commentary section and I will get straight to work to providing it. Thank you for the view and have a nice day.